write a limerick about chat GPT. There was once a chatbot named GPT whose conversations were quite adept. It could talk all day in a witty way and its answers were never inept. So I put chat GPT into Canvas. Why? Well, I guess this is kind of like Excelia's version of a, a bizarre concept car. Don't worry, uh, before anyone gets their knickers in or not, we're not doing this for real. Um, just wanted to experiment. As many of you know, I'm a bit of a nerd. I like to experiment and mess around with these kind of things. I noticed a lot of educators getting uh, caught up with chat GPT over the Christmas and New Year break. And uh, really great to see people catching on. And uh, I think it's a really good tool. There's been a lot of concerns about cheating and uh, plagiarism, copyright issues if you're using chat GPT to uh, generate course content and uh, I just I, I think it's a really great tool I, so I, I got in here and I wanted to muck around and see if it was possible to uh, use chat GPT 3's API um, and build that into using an LTI um, wrapper build that into canvas or you could probably plug it into any other learning management system now as well and see what kind of resource it could create for students uh, so looking at the positive side of things and what got my got me thinking about this was you know I've been following the discussions about chat GBT and I thought uh, you know when I saw this comment from a user on reddit you know they said I uh, I treat chat GBT like a teacher it helps me learn Italian and JavaScript I can ask every stupid question I love it uh, and that's really cool I, I think you know, as an educator the idea that students feel comfortable to ask a question that they might not have otherwise asked in a course is really wonderful so I, I'm seeing a lot of potential here and uh, of course I just wanted to tinker with it and see if it was possible to build it into a course and so one of the uses I saw people talking about um, in some of the, the networks online were you know, you, perhaps course developers might use ChatGPT to develop course content and, you know, on the, all the copyright issues that come with that. And I thought, what if the students were curating and creating their own content? Um, maybe looking at some of the principles of inquiry-based learning, you know, you'd still need an instructor there to, to guide the discussion, uh, to guide the sorts of questions that might be appropriate to ask and, of course, to help... Um, filter through and help them to understand how to assess the quality of responses they get. Um, remembering that ChatGPT is a language model, not so much a, a knowledge model. And um, yeah, I think questioning is a really good tool because it helps students to direct their learning, make sense of new ideas. So let's have a look at what I've done here. Um, I, I've just prepared some questions so that you can uh, get the idea but basically I've got it running here I wrote this in uh, JavaScript I've adapted a script developed by Sylvia Papp um, which I pulled off github and um, and I've just repurposed it to work with the chat GPT API um, I'm learning about things like fine-tuning and embedding to help um, change make sure the content is a lot more specific to sort of train the 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 bot the AI to respond in more meaningful ways to the sorts of questions that the students might get. I'm still learning about that side of things, but it's really interesting to see its uses. So this is just a, an example. So that maybe a student is doing a, a business management course and they need to write a business plan and they ask, um, what heading should I have in my business plan? And so you can see it working here and the bot responds um, with, with a list of the headings. And then perhaps the student might go, okay, yes, I understand that, I remember that. Um, oh, what's, gee, what's, what's market analysis? What does that mean? So uh, they go then and they ask a question in the market analysis, market analysis section of a business plan, what do I need to include? Uh, I've just pre-written these questions so you don't have to put up with my slow typing. And uh, then ask the question. Of course, we wait for a response from the AI. 
Uh, I'm using, I've also just to make it more accessible. And major players. Two, market analysis, identify the target market. That's just using a, a built-in um, speech synthesis tool. It's not very good. There's probably better ways to synthesize the speech. And there's no way to turn it off other than turning down your volume. But, you know, this is just a prototype, just for a bit of fun, really. Uh, anyway, so once they've asked that question, they might want to know about the section there that talks about um, the competitor analysis and SWOT analysis. So they might say, um, in a SWOT analysis for an Australian ice cream shop, what's an example of an opportunity and an example of a threat? And uh, so then the, the bot responds with this, and then uh, they might use it in a way for confirmation. You know, I'm doing my SWOT analysis for an ice cream shop. Could cold winter days be considered a threat to the business? So they might ask that question and, uh, and sort of get some response. So we can see this being used within a learning management system directly as a potential tool to help learning. Uh, so this is the, the bot um, create, or sorry, the student creating the, the content based on you know, their, their knowledge gaps or their lines of inquiry to help them learn. So I think it's a really great resource. I added another little fun, just because I wanted to do it, really. I thought it would be fun to have a, a way of saving the things that they want to say. So you can see under each response here, I've got a little button that says save to notes. And, uh, and what that does is uh, we've got a, a Google Docs here. I'll just get rid of all this stuff. Um, so a Google Docs where I might save my notes to. And so when I press this, I go through and press save. I want to save this bit and I want to save this bit. And what will happen here is it'll automatically just go and pop it in there. It'll take a couple of moments. You can see it's starting to populate already. And so the student is sort of creating their own learner guide, I guess, on the fly based on their own lines of inquiry. And, uh, you know, I've just sort of popped in a little timestamp, um, what what question the student asked, what the bot responded with, um, comments and further notes. And so they can add in some extra notes um, about, you know, further research they've done later on or um, further reading. So anyway, <laughs> just the concept. It's, I'd love to hear from you on other ways you've implemented ChatGPT. If any uh, fellow nerds are curious about how I've implemented the the um, the code behind the scenes of this then I'm happy to maybe do a follow-up video on the technical side of things uh, and yeah it's actually quite I mean if you think about the cost of this for you know maybe an RTO or university I'm using the most expensive one which is uh, can, just checking my usage here I was going to take a moment to, to refresh um, you know, all my testing so far has, and there's been a lot of testing getting this working, has cost me nine cents. And that's on the, uh, on the most expensive one, which is the Da Vinci model. But they have other models that you can train too. So a, a well-trained model for, uh, I was just looking through all the pricing here, a well-trained model under the system of, here we go, Ada is the fastest. It won't be as intelligent as, or you know, the, the language may not be as refined as Da Vinci. So the one that everyone's using on the, the web interface at um, chatgpt.openai.com or whatever the URL is, um, that's on the that's on the new ChatGPT 3.5. And um, when you're using it via the API, the cost is uh, two cents per a thousand tokens. It's kind of a weird system for how they price it, but. Um, yeah, so I'm using this one. They give you $18 worth of free credit to play with, so developers can maybe get used to it. And the ADA model is super, super cheap. Um, it's a 0.0004 of a cent for a thousand token. That, can, that will literally do, um, I, th I think, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pages of text before you even rack up a dollar, you know, it's very, very cheap. So yeah, I'm just starting my exploration of this side of things. As as someone who's spent a lot of time training people to think that I'm now learning about how to train bots is kind of funny and interesting. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope everyone has a very prosperous and exciting 2023 ahead.